Well, I say shalom, brethren. You know, to the people out there who know that uh, the true body of Christ is made up of different colours and kindreds and nations and tongues. And that uh, I can just as easily come on and say salam. Elohim, because it's a Semitic language and uh, it's very close connections with each other, just as the European languages are Latin based, the ones that aren't Celtic are Latin based, the ones that are Celtic have a strong affiliation with the uh, Semitic languages. So that's why there's very many studies out there that the Celts are actually uh, some of the lost tribes of Israel, not all the Celtic tribes, but I think uh, at least half. Because uh, the Romans killed off some of the Celtic tribes, which uh, one of the, I'm not just saying one of the tribes, a few of them were, were giant tribes. You know, there was a brother that was wanting to do some investigating into who is Gog and Magog, and I just simply said, research the, the Guild Hall in London. So I'll leave you to do that. You know, I've made videos about that, there's videos out there about that. And, uh, and so, yes. You know, we're living in an empire referred to as the King of the North in the book of Daniel chapter 11. Uh, referred to as commonly, it's just a British word. Um, and by that I mean the name British is um, a Hebrew word. Brit means covenant, ish means man. And, uh, you know, Gaelic Welsh and there's, there's also Scottish Irish Gaelic words that... Um, directly come across from Hebrew into um, some of these uh, Semitic languages, you know, these uh, Gaelic languages, Celtic languages. <coughs> um, you know, I made videos out there in the past about uh, just poking fun um, of, you know, the false doctrines, the half-truths out there, that it's only a certain race of people that are uh, belong to Israel, or that are Israeli. Even though, of course, most Israelis in the land today are of, of a lighter coloured skin. But that, that's not exclusive. I believe when I was in Israel last year, um, the Lord really showed me that uh, Miriam from a certain branch or certain part of the tribe of Judah was, was darker coloured. Not, not as we see Africans, but yes, the skin was, was a lot darker. than uh, and, and there are people that have lived in that land for thousands of years that that have uh, that that particular colour, it's just slightly darker than, than the olive coloured skin. Um, and so yeah, I mean it's various groups of Jews, you know, Ashkenazi, uh, more sort of a lighter colour, and then you get um, the Sephardics who largely many millions of them were killed in the in the death camps in uh, uh, in Europe during the Second World War. Now, does uh, ask does uh, a particular Jew mean that you're not a Jew? No, I mean the, the Jews are always um, um, at war. They're always in. Uh, it says if you have two Jews in a room, you know you get like uh, three different opinions. So um, they're very much divided. But uh, you know. Uh, this is how the, the secret societies can gain advantage in taking a control of a people is through um, dividing and conquering, you know, the Hegelian dialectics. There's many, many videos out there about that. And that's how they take control of uh, groups of people, nations, colours, kindreds, and so on. And so what we have, you know, among the, the darker skinned races in Africa, we have a movement called the Black Israelites, with which they're exclusively, they say that they're the only um, authentic Israelites, and then they start naming people from other kindreds, such as the Red Indians, who are not black, the Chinese, who are not black, um, you know, the Hispanics, who are not black, <laughs> because they, they, they are Europeans, actually. And yet they start naming these uh, kindreds, races, as if they are black, but they're, but they're not black. And so the whole black Israelite theory um, is, is really sort of... Uh, I think it's just uh, cancelled itself out um, due to the fact that their own doctrine contradicts what they believe in. That you got to be a black uh, sort of tribe from Africa to be from the tribe of Judah. 
not true. Absolutely not, not true. In fact, Yeshua and the Apostle Paul defines a, a, a true Jew as someone who's born inwardly through the Holy Spirit. And that, and that therefore, um, you're referred to as a spiritual Jew. The word Jew itself is a meaning. Uh, Yud Yahuda means to praise and exalt and thank God. Yah, you know, the Most High God. That's, that's the root meaning of, of the name of Yahuda or Jew. All these names that the patriarchs were given have meanings. Uh, Ruvan uh, has a connotation to a man, you know, and uh, uh, and so on. Um, you know, some of you have, have studied about the gospel and the stars. And, uh, you know, these star signs represent also a tribe of Israel. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, the Rastafarians believe if, let's say, you're, you're born under the, the star sign Taurus, which is a bull, so that's represented by the tribe Ephraim, which is, is the bull, but uh, that's not always the case. In fact, it's never hardly the case because um, because being born under a star sign it, it has nothing to do with who you are or your destiny or anything with that matter because the stars were uh, created, the star signs, it says that in Genesis 1, 14 to 16, God created uh, the sun, moon, and stars for days, years, signs, and seasons. These signs represent the Messiah. These signs represent something of, of the Messiah and the kingdom of heaven. And they actually tell the, the, the fall and the redemption of mankind as well. Now again, you know, the, the man being represented by the, the tribe of Reuben, who, who was the firstborn. And um, so I could go on, I've made videos on this. But uh, it's believed that the star signs, as it were, are about a month behind for what they really are because the, the Earth is actually speeded up, uh, rotating. So obviously the Flat Earthers are, are lo totally lose them in this conversation. But, uh, but that seems to be uh, what's happened. And you know, when it refers to in Daniel 7.25 as the Antichrist changing times and laws, space and time, times and laws, you know, um, the very laws that which govern the universe, connected with space and time, connected with uh, the reality that we all experience every day, and yet, of course, uh, through the Mandela effect, we realise that they're they are slightly altering the reality that we live in. They've been successful in doing that the past couple of years. Those of us who have seen that um, bear witness to that. CERN themselves have admitted that these things are happening. And so the ones that can't see the changes are in denial about CERN, in denial about, you know, what particular powers the Antichrist has, in denial about that we're in the last days, um, in denial about many, many different things. You know, so when you read the book of Daniel, make sure you're not in Dan I.L. You know, just a, a tip uh, for you. You know, do pray about everything. Take everything to prayer. You know, don't believe everything I say. Don't... Um, I commend people for not following individuals, but <clears throat> you know the reason why I, I, I subscribe to a lot of channels, and the reason I do that is so that I'm interested in quite a few subjects. I'm interested in current affairs. I'm interested in topics about the Bible. I'm interested in street preaching. I'm interested in healing. I'm interested in how generally um, the body of Christ is acting and interacting upon the earth, and um, and so you know when I'm called to um, help brothers and sisters, um, um, what would you say, to shed light on the Word of God, you know, it's part of my ministry as a teaching ministry, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very much a test that when you, you come into an agreement with the teaching, Satan will test, test you to see if uh, you're going to stand firm within that teaching, and you, you've got to... Uh, be able to stand firm and, you know, allow God to take your life forward the, the way He wants to. And uh, some some of us, that happens. Some of us, you know, we're very much resented for, for the teachings or the beliefs that we hold, whether it be a pre-tribulation rapture, I believe I am um, what you might call pre- and mid-tribulation, because I only believe the tribulation lasts for three and a half years. 
if that, you know, the, the one on uh, Israel is, is a sort of a, an attack at the end. But um, the whole reign of Antichrist, uh, I believe, is going to last less than seven years. I don't, I don't believe there is seven years left. But uh, for those that do believe that there is a seven year tribulation, I do believe that we're, 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 we're pretty much in that now. Um, I personally don't believe it's the actual um, the, the last three and a half years. I think I think we probably still have four, five, six, seven years left um, from uh, from this year, um, possibly five or six years. But uh, that's my that, that's that's the the conviction of beliefs that I came to about 15 years ago, and it was confirmed by another brother in America, uh, an older brother who 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 was a, an ex Amish and. Uh, and so, um, you know, they, they actually studied the, the God's calendar, the lunar calendar, and I prayed about understanding that, and God gave me this man, and he was able to really explain these things very, very well. And so, you know, I salute all, all the lunar um, Sabbath assemblies out there. There's one I know that I've uh, come into knowledge of um, in Michigan, and, you know, they, they do both the lunar and the uh, Gregorian Sabbaths, which is very good because, you know, we are commanded to, to meet together regularly on the new moons and Sabbath days, so at least you can understand what a new moon is, you know, it's when, when the moon is renewing itself, it's not when it's full, it's when it's renewing itself, you know, the uh, description is within, the words describe what, what, uh, what these things actually mean, you know, we get meanings from words. Yet there are still people out there that believe that months start on full moons. It doesn't make any sense, but uh, anyway. So they'll, they'll gather on the new moons and also, you know, the, the seven day count from the new moon and also they will, they'll gather on, on uh, the seven day count on the Gregorian calendar, which I think is very good because, because these are the only two options really. Um, as far as if you're a believer goes because uh, it's, you know, um, history tells us that, that the Sunday was always uh, the first day of, of the, the Roman week from about the 3rd century. They used to have a 10 day week. I don't want to burden yourselves with too much information in this video. But uh, there's just a few things that I wanted to, to speak about on this video, obviously. And uh, one of the things was that the, the, the British... Um, deficit, um, the money deficit. America's said to be 20 trillion in debt. Um, I'm not sure if that's a collective figure, I'm not sure if it's a debt only figure or it includes you know, all the pensions, all the debts also that the nation owes. Now the United Kingdom figure is something to do with it's approaching 2 trillion which is a tenth of the American national debt but if you actually include all the other figures you know about the pensions and about um, you know, um, you know, tax and about many, many other different issues. Actually, it's actually approaching. Um, I believe uh, some figures five years ago said it was over six or seven trillion. And so, so if, that, if these figures were over five or six years ago, some people have said that uh, the the figure is now approaching. Well, let me just get this right. I believe they're saying it was approaching eight trillion, which uh, in dollars it's about probably eleven or twelve trillion dollars, which is more than half of the American national debt. Now, I just want to explain to some people. Um, I know that um, some Americans, they, you know, they look to, they see what's happening in their nation, and they think, man, you know, this is bad. Some, some people come here, I know some Americans, I have one or two friends who are Americans um, that stay here in the UK, they've re relocated here. But what we, what we have is obviously, you know, you watch videos on the UK, it's very much a surveillance state. Um, it's also, um, you know, the head of the state is, is the Queen. And, uh, you know, through her um, covenant with the people, British, Brit means covenant, through the covenant that she has with the British people, that she is the head of of the so-called Protestant Church, and yet she does not uphold what the Bible teaches about 
um, free will, about freedoms that, that we've inherited from our forefathers. You know, that we came out from under the, the shadow of the Catholic Church were very, very oppressive 400 years ago after the Reformation. You know, however we view the Battle of the Boyne, however we view all, all these different things, it was a religious freedom that was released into Europe during that time, very much the UK, uh, the Reformation. And what, what you really had was sort of three groups, you know, you had the, the Catholic armies in Britain, you had the, the, the Loyalists who at that time, you know, the, the royal family were Catholic, so the, the, the Loyalists were actually Catholics. Like today the Loyalists are Protestants, but they were, the Loyalists were Catholics. And then the third group you had was the Puritans and the Covenanters. The Puritans were sort of the what, what came about from the Covenanters, but the Covenanters were literally an army that uh, were put together by the people, for the people, to preserve the freedoms and the rights of the people under the King James Bible. And that group of people were involved in, um, yes, they even decapitated um, kings and queens who would not agree to uh, the terms and conditions of the covenant by which the sovereign... Uh, is enthroned by the people that in fact you know the British people themselves are sovereigns um, and uh, as sovereigns we enthrone the sovereign who makes sure that she, she, she or she is overseeing um, the covenant which the King James Bible um, was, was basically built upon um, 1611 King James Bible, which did include the Apocrypha, which did originally include the Book of Enoch, you know, which the Apocrypha is not Catholic books, because if you read the Apocrypha, they're nothing to do with the Catholic Church. They're to do with the Semitic Jewish people. You know, if, if you read uh, the Declaration of Independence, a broth Declaration of Independence of uh, 13th century, you'll find out that, uh, including my family name is actually one of the, one of the um, families on there which uh, made that covenant and they, and they said that they could trace their lineages back to the, the kings of Israel. Okay, and they could actually trace their lineages back um, in the, 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 the 12th and 13th centuries to the kings of Israel. Now I'm not sure if... Um, certain Africans can do that maybe some can the fact is I've been to Africa I've spoken to some of the chiefs out there, I've spoken to some of the first converts to Christianity out there who that um, many of them um, say and have educated me in the fact that many of the um, about their drink symbols, about many of the universities which existed, you know some of the first universities in the world existed in West Africa Queen of Sheba was from West Africa, um, but there is a direct link to um, the tribe, as it were, which which we uh, read about in the Bible called the Amalekites. Uh, it's not something I made up. It's something that um, was was actually uh, spoken to me. That I actually learned about it. Now that's not to say you know, you know when I went out to Africa. I was invited out there by a group of um, Liberian refugees who wanted to learn more about the Torah, who wanted to get baptized, who wanted to set up a little um, congregation together, and I was very, very glad to go out there and um, uh, and do these things. And now, of course, I'm involved in, or uh, you know, I am involved and in, I have been helping uh, AIDS orphans in, in Uganda because you know a lot of the aid, a lot of the the, the worst things, even in the world, is happening in, in East Africa just now. Um, Sudan, uh, right down Uganda, right down that east, eastern side of Africa. And sometimes it's a little bit distressing that not enough Africans, African Americans or whoever, get involved in helping other Africans. And so it's left to Europeans to not only um, bear that burden, go out there, preach the gospel, baptize, um, whatever it is, you know, help these AIDS orphans who have no one to look after them, um, while other Africans or generational slaves like African Americans just look on and they've done, you know, 
they've, they've now been released from that slavery for at least a hundred years. Yes, they've been through a lot of social and political um, turmoil in, in the United States, but many of them earn a good living. In fact, you know, my, my brother there from New York blessed my ministry with two mobile phones, two Blackberry phones, a couple of years ago. I still have mine. My ministry partner, uh, I think, gave his to, to his friend, you know, after he, he left my ministry, which uh, I'm not sure what he's doing now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was the one who in Africa started at Jeshuron, which, uh, which I didn't name the ministry Jeshuron, but, you know, it was God. Uh, the, you know, the, they mostly prayed about it. And so I understand that there's um, people from all groups, all social and cultural groups that are part of this end time, um, anointed Israel, that have been revealed to them that they're part of one of the twelve tribes. Now, does that mean that they're not part of the church? So this, this is the whole thing. This is the whole uh, thing that I suppose uh, that in the last days we need more rev revelation from the Lord about this. That in fact, if uh, you know, you know, just the sequence of events is going to happen in the end. My King James Bible tells me that the, the 144,000 are the ones who are raptured. <coughs> and meet Yeshua in the clouds. That's what my Bible reads in Revelation chapter 7. They are sealed, they are anointed. Revelation chapter 14, Yeshua comes back, stands on the Mount of Olives, which is also in Zechariah 14, and it says that the 144,000, so 12 tribes from each of the tribes of Israel, um, that it's not said that they're literally from the land of Israel, but they could be from all the different uh, nations in the world, and they're gathered up as first fruits. And another name for first fruits is uh, fruits of the nations, which Ephraim has a root meaning of fruit, fruit of the nations, which is just a general term for the other ten tribes, or the lost ten tribes, which Woody Allen says that, uh, you know, some of these uh, lost tribes are so bad they should remain lost. <laughs> Absolutely. But look at what Judah did. I mean, the Bible does testify about the sins of these tribes, but also her treacherous sister Judah, it says, who some of her sins were even worse than, 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 than many of the other tribes of Israel. Um, the tribe of Ephraim itself was one of the, the instigators of a lot of uh, the wickedness that went on in Israel, um, which really stemmed from the uh, idol worship that the tribe Dan actually did. And, um, and I've watched studies on, you know, are the tribe of Dan, in fact, part of Europe? I think that that could well be the case. But you've got to understand that, that Europe are about uh, two to three hundred million people, and uh, the tribe of Dan is probably not even one percent of, of, of that continent. Probably less than one percent, probably less than point zero whatever of, of a percent um, of, of the whole the continent of Europe, except that a lot of uh, the, these Danites were able to establish themselves as um, parts of, of, of what you might call the elite society within Europe. And of course, there's many studies on um, serpent worship uh, going on uh, within um, a lot of these secret societies. And that's, that, of course, represents the serpent who, who deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. And again, it's one of the, one of the star signs um, in the heavens. Hallelujah. Um, so I hope I've spoken enough, uh, sort of covered uh, enough of these issues, but really it was just to tell you that, you know, Britain at the moment is, is really, a lot of people have names for some of the towns here. Like there's so many cameras in a town, it's like an open prison. You know, it's like you're, not, you're never really sort of free. You're sort of, it's almost like you're wandering around a prison. And if you throw a letter, if you maybe spit out chewing gum, and you're caught, somebody catches you, maybe, um, I, I don't know, you, 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 could, you, you, take a, you take a wrong turn, and the signs aren't very clear either. And so you could end up taking a turn, and then it could be like, oh, oh this is just a bus lane, or this is just uh, for taxis, you know. And you could end up paying 30, 60, 100, 300 quid, you know, if you don't pay the fine within a few weeks. Uh, and many of us are travelling, many of us don't have time to check our mail all the time, but this is this is the, the society we live in in Great Britain, heavily in debt, 
Um, two, I think a third of the debt is owned by the Bank of England, which the Bank of England was really taken over by the Rothschilds um, after the, the Battle of Waterloo. That's <laughs> incredible. So, uh, you know, Britain was one of the founding nations of the land of Israel uh, today. And so it's almost as if they, they ju they're just biting the hand that's feeding them. You know, um, a lot of these elite people are using the wealth of these nations to, to create another nation, which I believe, yes, it, it, it did prophecy about it in the Bible. Um, do I believe a lot of these Jews are Jews? Yes, I, I do believe that they're Jews. Do I believe they're born again? Do I believe they're saved? No, not unless they, they have Yeshua as their Messiah. You know, um, Yeshua means salvation. And Jesus says, um, how do we know that we know him? By the fruits, we will know them. And so this is where teaching comes in. You know, that's where I began this video. I said that part of my ministry is about teaching. Now, when you share teachings with other brothers and sisters, uh, you know, I've learned enough to not um, impose my teachings on people, which I've warned other ministry partners in the past not to do that, and they've done that. But, uh, you know, it's more of a case of if someone is praying about a certain thing, just like it's happened in the past few weeks, you know, as Brother Rick out there, you know, I see your text, Brother, sometimes I'm just not signed in to answer, you know, on, on my channel, but uh, you're, you're very welcome to meet up if you want to give a testimony. Uh, you know, if Sister uh, Julia wants to give a testimony, that's, that's awesome uh, as well. Brother Rick, if you need prayer as well, you know, you know, we know where to find me, man. Um, but you're welcome to come and give a testimony, welcome to fellowship with us here. And, um, you know, Glasgow, you know, going out preaching quite regularly there, um, traveling around preaching the Word of God. So, yes, um, I think, is not mistaken, I'm using this phone, my other phone actually, uh, this is my other phone, which uh, stopped working about over a week ago, so that's why I've not been able to return a lot of phone calls. But, um, let it be according to the Spirit of God, I would say. Um, because there's a lot of radiation coming from these phones. Uh, I think we're going to have to stop using them quite soon. Yeah, I'm using it for ministry and to make videos on my channel, but a lot of us know we're in the very last hours, you know, we're in the like, twilight almost of Yeshua's second coming, but there is a lot of sort of total darkness before that sunrise, as it were, metaphorically speaking, that it's just before the sunrise that you know, the sky is very, very dark, you know, 1, 2, to 3 a.m. in the morning, that's where we are right now. We're just waiting on our redemption, it does draweth near, all these signs are happening in the heavens and on the earth, and hearts are growing cold towards uh, the truth and the gospel. You know, David Lena preaching in London, and, uh, you know, they're all mourning about him uh, preaching, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near, and yet uh, this, this nation is meant to be Christian. You know, the, the Queen herself, you know, is meant to be the defender of the faith and she's meant to be over all the police forces and the military and everything. And she's not enforcing um, the, the Bible because uh, why? People are sinning, people are um, hateful towards each other, spiteful towards each other when they hear the truth. Their, their demons get very, very um, anxious because they know that they're going to hell and they know that... Um, through preaching the word of God, they could lose their prize, which is that person's soul, which they're inhabiting with their lusts and um, addictions, which uh, demons do get us to um, be addicted to whatever it may be in the flesh, alcohol, smoking, drugs, etc., 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 making money, which, of course, my ex-wife... It, she, she just couldn't come to the, the realization that, that she was to blame for her dad's death. You know, wh when he came and visited the UK, you know, she took off that day into a training program when her dad had a had a had um, an episode, almost like a heart attack the day before. And that day was a Sabbath according to God's word. And she still to this day we we'll tried to blame everyone else, we we'll tried to blame me for that, and when she was the one who ran off that day, and her dad needed her that day, and we needed to go to hospital, uh, to take her dad to hospital that day, we had agreed to do that, but she didn't, she didn't keep her word, and that's just about um, what I've experienced with uh, most Christians, 
not just Christians, but most, most people in the world, they will um, agree to something and then they will go off in some other direction and blame. Blame the one who has loved them. Blame the one who has warned them about the, the wrath to come. Blame the one who has told them the dangers. And yet they have not heeded that warning and therefore are walking in unrighteousness. They are walking according to the ways of the flesh and not according to the spirit, which is not pleasing to God. And that this is... It's not going to please anyone preaching the gospel unless you have a circumcised heart and your mind is on the things of God. It's not a pleasing thing to hear. You know, you look at my YouTube views for my channel. The views are way, way, way down um, on the videos that I make. Why? Because people don't like hearing the truth these days. Um, because they're too busy playing computer games, too busy um, working towards what they think is a better career. When we're, uh, again, I've said we're in the twilight of um, sort of world history at the moment and Jesus is about to come back very soon and make all things new as he said and uh, for eyes are not on Christ tell you um, anything else that is not of God is death so keep your eyes on Jesus Christ salute you all out there any questions guys let me know thanks for watching